Uh, today, we'll be talking about the topic, how to answer interview questions like a pro. Cafe New Canadians is a virtual event series wherein we discuss topics that matter to immigrants, newcomers to Canada, international students, and anyone who's planning to move to Canada. Cafe New Canadians is brought to you by New Canadians, a TV show and a web series, which uh, brings to you content around employment, immigration, settlement, uh, small businesses, and a whole range of themes. Uh, lots of information and resources for immigrants. If you're joining us from Canada, you can watch us on Omni TV. Also stay connected with us on our social platforms. Um, I'm Shruti Dargan, I'm your host for today, and I'm very pleased to welcome two experts who will be joining the panel. We've got Brian G. Bashan, who is uh, the career coach and uh, interview specialist. He's also the CEO and founder of Evolution Evolution, uh, which is a global coaching company. We also have Clark Glassford. He's a career interview coach. Uh, again, someone with, uh, he in fact has um, a lot of HR experience, over 20 years of human resources experience, and will of course be able to help you with what is it that HRs are thinking when you're answering interview questions. So welcome to both of you. And before we get talking to our guests, I'll just remind everyone joining us today that you can of course ask questions to our guests. Uh, you can type those questions in the Q&A box if you're joining us on Zoom. If you're joining us on YouTube where we are also live streaming this webinar, then you can share the questions in the chat box. So a very warm welcome to Clark and Brian. How are you doing? Thank you for having us. So before we begin this chat, um, of course, I'm sure everyone joining us today is wondering that, you know, interview questions becomes a really tough topic for uh, anyone. Um, it's not easy. There's, it's, it's nerve wracking to say. And of course, um, even if you're well prepared in that very moment, there are just so many things that can go wrong. So we our two experts over here today are there to help you. Uh, please start typing your questions right away and let's begin this chat. So Brian and Clark, um, it's wonderful having you here with us today. Let's kick off this chat with uh, a discussion about the Canadian interview scenario. Uh, what is it like? Because for a lot of, for a lot of uh, newcomers who move to Canada, the process actually might not be the same. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little, Brian, let's begin with you. Um, tell us a little about yourself, of course, and then let's jump straight into what do you think of the Canadian interview experience? Absolutely. Thank you so much. And it's a joy to be here tonight with you, Shruti, and with Clark. It's great to be here with you and for everyone who is watching live or on replay. So for myself, the interview process um, is something that I agree with you. It's always a little nerve wracking, right? And so for myself, as someone who's gone through many interviews, someone who has led interviews and watched others in interviews, I certainly believe that the more that you're prepared, not only in you know, anticipating questions, you know, being very familiar with the role that you're going in for is so critical, but even more important than that, I think is the mental and the inner preparation that you need to do in visualizing the meeting and your energy truly impacts the meeting. And that is felt. And I think that is something that is so critical and, you know, how to manage that. So from my experience coming here, it's something that I've always had to learn through every experience. And it's something that definitely has to be put together um, to, so it has great success. Thank you. Clark, let's hear a little from you. Uh, tell us about yourself and maybe a brief overview of the interview process in Canada. Oh, thanks, Trudy. It's uh, it's wonderful to be here. So my background is in, like you mentioned, it's in human resources. I've worked with uh, big companies, small companies in a human resource capacity for over 20 years. I'm probably in the thousands of interviews being on the hiring side of the table, as well as being interviewed for roles myself. So familiar with uh, with the interview process and as Brian spoke to there, it, the mindset is, is, is absolutely key. It's part of your, your preparation. So uh, when it comes to the Canadian interview process, it's, it's, it's very much um, application to phone interview, to possible Zoom interviews, 
to um, face-to-face panel type interviews like what, like what we could be seeing here, here today. Um, and so it's that preparation on the front end uh, from right from when you decide that you're, you're starting to, to, to think about a role, starting to uh, think about applying for different jobs right at the front end is when your preparation starts. Your preparation doesn't start when you see the job posting. It's like, okay, now I have to get my resume together and, yeah. and quickly get ready for that interview. So that's that. That's when I'm talking about preparation. It starts way back and getting that mindset that Brian's speaking to. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've noticed uh, here, of course, there's a lot more focus on, say, behavioral questions or trying to assess, you know, what is called soft skills or transferable skills that people may have. Um, this may be new to some newcomers who are moving from different parts of the uh, world and wherein, you know, interviews could be largely, say, technical or they may not have a process wherein there's first an HR round and then more of a technical round and, you know, like the stages that are there. So any comments on that or something that you would like to highlight over here? That's fine. Yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just start out. I'll just share an example of a good friend of mine that um, right now, so many of the interviews are still virtual, you know, and that's a whole different way of interviewing for all of us and how to do that. And, you know, how do you make that connection through a screen um, is always difficult. And I think, you know, one of the soft skills, a very good friend of mine, actually, um, that was going for an interview, his two children were in the other room, their nanny was sick that day, his wife was at work. He had set everything up in the other room, snacks, their favorite movie, everything going on. And in the midst of the interview, he starts hearing noise in the other room and he's kind of just ignoring it. And he could tell the other people on the screen were also ignoring it. When all of a sudden the door barged open, the daughter appears you know, next talking about that they, she got hit and everything. And he was very calm. And he had to say, just excuse me. He went into the room and came back and he said, I just thought at that moment, everything was just over. And they actually complimented him at the end of the interview saying, well, first of all, your daughter is lovely. And also they said, you know, you were so calm and you could just see the energy of how he didn't get flustered by it. And he got a second interview and he was offered the job. And, and they said, one of the things that really helped set him apart was that moment in the midst of all those technical skills, but seeing how he handled a disruption. They said, we want someone that can deal with disruptions, even with employees. So those soft skills are really, really important. Yes. I, in fact, let me just begin with a question right away, because I see something that's exactly connected with what you just said. Uh, a question from Raj here says, uh, he's asking, that while it's important to be good with answers to technical questions or hard skills, it's equally important to create an emotional connect with the hiring manager. So what would be your advice to create emotional connects with them? And I guess this was one very good example of being able to you know, hit the right chord uh, with them, but anything else that comes to mind? Yeah, for, for, for me, it's it, when it comes down to making that emotional connection, it, it starts with, with your preparation and that preparation builds into your delivery. And, you know, Brian talks about that visualization of being in the interview room, meeting people for the first time, having that connection with them. So it's, it's your delivery, it's your tone, it's that kind of warmth that you you bring to the, to the interview table. Trudy, you talked about uh, behavioral interview questions. So a lot of people not being familiar with that side of, of, of the interview questions, more used to technical based questions. The reason a lot of companies now have switched over in a number of years now have switched over to behavioral type questions is because they they can teach the technical side of jobs and their skill shortages in Canada. They've been going on for years and it's been slowly it, it continues to build skill shortages everywhere. So the technical aspects of the job, as long as you have a, a, a base, um, they're considering you. And the next so the next step for an interviewer. Uh, and a hiring manager is looking at you and saying, are you going to be a fit? Can I relate to this person? And how the interviewer does that is by asking those behavioral questions, which then puts the interviewee in the position of storytelling. 
And so they're telling a story about their past work experience or personal life experience or volunteer experience or whatever the, the question lends itself to, to walk them through an example of how they demonstrate that skill, whether it's customer service or flexibility or um, initiative and things like that, right? And it's, it's, it's having the ability to walk through a story. So the storytelling aspect of interviewing is really critical here in, in, in Canada. And that's what helps you make that connection. Sure. Uh, I just want to build on that, Clark. That's such a great point. The storytelling, it really draws the individuals in. It's one thing just to give an example and give numbers of things you've done. But if you can put it in a context of a story, it really is important. And, and I find in the interviews, when I was a partner in executive search, I found that the people that demonstrated with those stories are the ones that changed the room dynamics as well. People were more engaged. Um, and that's, that's a great point. Yeah. And so to, just to, to further on that, you know, and that's where the preparation practice comes in is some people are really gifted storytellers and can tell stories on the spot. No problem. They can tell stories all day long. We all know people like that, uh, but others storytelling doesn't come as naturally. And so that's where, you know, before you get into that interview room, you want to think about the stories you want to tell. You want to practice telling those stories and, and thinking about how you're going to connect with, with that hiring manager. While we build on that in just a few minutes, I would like to take a few steps back because Clark, there's something that you said, uh, which is that the interview preparation doesn't really begin when you see that job posting. It begins much before that. So could we talk a little about that? Tell me what is it that one should do or how is it that they can actually prepare, begin to prepare for an interview? So one of the tools I use or just suggestions I give to clients or anyone who's looking for interview guidance is even before you start putting pen to paper or typing out a resume is to really think about what you bring to uh, the roles you're, you're applying for. And that's, that's the hardest part. I know we'll probably talk about questions here about some difficult interview questions. And one of the most difficult ones that I see often is, you know, what, what do you bring to the role? You know, what, what, what sets you apart from other applicants? And it's a really tough question if you haven't started out at the beginning uh, by identifying what kind of key skills you have. And so I, I break it into four quadrants. And this is where I say, say to people, people, take a piece of paper, take a pen, really short form notes, but identify your education and training just in bullet points, identify your experience in bullet points. A lot of people miss out. This is the third quadrant I tell them to focus on is volunteer work. So the volunteer type of work they've done, the charitable work they've done, and that can be in a charity, in a, in a religious organization, anything they've done within the community, it could be coaching a soccer team. That's the type of volunteer work you can make a list on. And then some of your key accomplishments, whether it's a life accomplishment that you're really proud of or a work-related accomplishment that you're really proud of. And pretty quick, what you're going to see is you've got a list. You've got a list of really cool stuff that you've done. And you, what I tell people to do is organize that list in a way that you're highlighting the top three to five things on each of those, each of those lists. And that becomes your speaking points to start and start your process of your preparation. And that all feeds into your resume writing. And then that fault flows through into how you prepare, prepare for the interview and, and some of the stories you're going to want to tell about each of those things, each of those areas. And I guess what it also does is it takes that anxiety and nervousness out of the picture when it comes to, you know, preparing this way with those four quadrants. Uh, Brian, I'd like you to build on that. I know that you are very passionate about the mindset that one can actually develop when it comes to, you know, interview preparation or any kind of meeting and engagement. Uh, so tell us about that. How can one actually start that process? Sure. So I think, you know, a lot of times what people do is I, you know, they get advice when you're looking for a job, everyone's willing to give you advice. Yeah. And one of the pieces of advice that I often hear people say, oh, I've been told that my full-time job should be looking for my next job. And I'm like, no, I totally disagree. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, the best thing to do is maybe you only spend one hour a day actually applying for roles. It's better to spend 
the time where you are feeling energized, you're feeling clear, that you know what you're looking for rather than just wasting time applying out of a fear mo mode or mindset. Oh, I just have to, the more I send out, the more opportunities I have. Well, actually, when you're doing that, the energy behind that is a frantic energy. It's, it's one not of abundance. So the best thing to do is every day that you, you have to do to build on what Clark said, really know what you're seeking. Yeah. Spend the time to say, what do I desire? You know, what are my skills? What, you know, what's my expertise? And where do I want to start to look for that? When you do that, you're more open to creative possibilities. You're more open to looking at new things that you would just say no to. And it makes it easier when there's a tension that builds when you're doing it. That's a sign that you're trying to control the outcome. And that's when you need to step away. So what I tell people is, you know, develop a practice, you know, make sure that you have a gift of time that, you know, you exercise, that you go for a walk, that you do some routine in the morning that, you know, really moves your body. And also mentally as well, you know, that can be doing some meditation, it can be, you know, doing some breathing exercises that helps regulate you. So when you do sit down, what you're working on, there's more clarity. And that is so powerful. And that's the biggest piece that people forget. And that's why the anxiety goes through the roof sometimes when you're scrolling and scrolling and applying and applying and getting nowhere. So it's important to to really make sure that the mind and the body and the spirit are also working with you. I'd, I'd just like to follow up on, on Brian's point because that is, it's, it's really, really key. I, I think it's, it's such a great way to, to summarize building that mindset for going through a recruitment process because Brian made a comment there where he said, there is only so much in your control in a recruitment process. So there's, there's a million things that are out of your control through the company you're, you're, you're applying to, to hiring managers, to timelines and all sorts of stuff that can, that are, are really out of your control. So what's in control is how you, how you go about your, 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 your day, which is, you know, setting aside some time to applying, being selective in who you apply for, and then focusing on your physical health, your mental health, and having that positive mindset. Because if you go into the into organizations and, and you're you're applying just constantly, it can really weigh you down over time. So I think that's a really, really great advice, Brian. Definitely. Now the interview stage comes after the resume stage. When your resume has been selected, there's something interesting that the HR or the recruiter found in it. And the first question that people are often asked is, uh, tell us a little about yourself. Now I know that is easy because one would say that, you know, that's the one thing that you definitely should prepare. But for me, and I'm sure that there's so many others like me who find that very first question, maybe the toughest one, because I know that the recruiter or the HR person has uh, my resume in their hand. Now, what more do I tell them or how much do I tell them? Um, Clark, I'll ask you first and Brian, uh, if you could elaborate on that then. Yeah. So one of the things I'll tell people about interviews, and it's it, it's hard to wrap your mind around when you're the interviewee, when you're the one being interviewed, is that interviews are a two-way conversation. So yes, you're doing a lot of the speaking. They're asking you questions. You've got some nerves and some anxiety about being in there for the interview, but it's also your opportunity to ask questions as well. So with a question like just you asked, so tell us about yourself. And I agree with you, Shruti, it is one of the toughest questions and not just for people entering the workforce, but for people right up to senior executive positions, I've seen really, really struggle with that question. Um, if they've got your resume in front of you, you can turn that question around to the interviewer, the hiring manager, the interview panel and say, is there a specific part of my, part of my experience that you're looking, me to, looking at me to, to speak to? Would you like to know about my, my personal side? Like what, what part of me is, would, you, would you like me to speak to? So that's one way of, of trying to, if you have a, a big resume with a lot of experience and a lot of, uh, you've, you've done a lot of things to try and fine tune because you could be speaking for quite a while. Um, the other way is through your, of course, your, your preparation where I talked about having those few key things in those four quadrants I talked about, which is your education, 
experience, volunteer work and life accomplishments. And those are some of the things then that you can highlight when they say, tell us about yourself. You can, you can quickly walk through some of those items there that you feel really highlight your skill set, your background and who you are as a, as a candidate for that role. But <clears throat> always when it comes to interviewing, when in doubt, ask, ask questions to the, to the panel. They'll be happy to give you some guidance along the way. And chances are, if you're asking those types of questions, they're giving you guidance, so much of your competition, other applicants will not be asking that. And that gives you a bit more insight into how to structure your, your response better. I see that, yeah. Now, Brian, while you answer that question, could you also maybe highlight if we were to come up with a standard response, uh, what are some of the key things that you, know, you would say that are to be included in that response? Sure, so I'm gonna answer the question with the lens uh, for new Canadians or you know, for people who are you know, new to the country and interviewing. And in my experience, probably one of the biggest barriers that new Canadians often face when they go for interviews is the panel will say, you're amazing. You've done so many incredible things. However, you don't have Canadian experience, which to me is the craziest question I've ever heard because a lot of times the individuals have done even more than those who are asking where they've come from. And so what I always tell, um, especially someone who's new to Canada interviewing, when that when this question comes up, it's the perfect time to own it and to share why you immigrated to Canada and to make it very positive to say, you know, of all the countries that I could have immigrated to, I chose Canada to make this my home. And I know my global expertise is going to be beneficial, hopefully in this company, but definitely here. And I may not have had the privilege to work here yet, but I'm quite excited to bring it in. Right away, it just kind of deletes the myth. It yeah. shows you own it, that you're aware about it, and it sets the tone. And so that's something for someone who's new and anyone who's faced that challenge of the, you know, no Canadian experience. It's a great moment to reframe it in a very positive way. Yeah, that's a great tip. But what about, um, so I have a question there, which is, you know, if the interviewer does not mention the lack of Canadian experience, is immigration something that an interviewee must bring up on their own or how can they kind of play that up? You know, I think it's a, a, an important moment, especially if you are a new Canadian interviewing. Obviously, they're going to see in your resume, you know, where you came from and where you worked. But I think it's important to just mention it, to say, you know, they'll be curious to hear, you know, I chose to immigrate here. I came with my family. We're very excited to be here. And this is where I want to spend my time. Because I think it does. You don't have to elaborate. They don't need to know the whole story of where you went and how long the immigration process took. They, no one needs to know that. But I think it's in a positive way. They would like to hear it. Mm -hmm. And because diversity is important, and that's something that's very important that I think would benefit your candidacy. For sure. Uh, Clark, how about um, you could maybe also talk about, you know, the first impression. I see a question related to that over here too, from Mike, that the first impression is a tough one to break so could you tell us a little about you know how besides what Brian just shared and that's a great tip there um, how can one build a strong first impression yeah so it's a, a strong first impression is is key in, in any interview process and and where I work with people on and, and my advice is always it comes down to I keep saying it but it, it is it is your preparation and so when you prepare one of the things that you want to do is you want to practice how you will respond to questions, how you'll respond to make, to greeting the, the interviewer, the hiring manager, hiring panel. You'll want to say practice and how you practice, you say you practice out loud, you practice in front of a mirror, you practice using your phone to, to record, you practice in front of a, a family member who can ask you questions. And it, 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 it's again, it's about that mindset and getting comfortable hearing yourself speak, hearing your delivery, hearing your tone, and the way you're the way you're coming across, and, and practice making um, the right positive Im Im impression. So that's one way I would say, really work on on making strong first impressions by practicing. It's it 
it's as, it's as simple as that, but that's where the work comes in. It comes in all of the front end when you're, when you're at home, home doing that, but it does work like a charm. And what you'll find happens is as you practice, you're going to pick up on little cues about yourself. You're going to say, okay, well, you know, maybe my, my, the way I said this isn't going to sound right. So I'll, I'll change some words around, or, you know, I find I'm, I'm looking down too much as I'm answering the question versus looking, looking straight ahead, or maybe I'm look you know, I have my arms crossed a little bit and I'm looking a little kind of frowny on, 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 on the screen. And, you know, I need to practice, you know, maybe smiling and looking a little bit more enthusiastic. And it's those little things that set the tone for your interview so nicely for, for uh, making that great first impression. Sure. Now, something that comes to mind is that, you know, answering interview questions is pretty much, I understand it's a mindset thing, but it's also almost like your mind plays games with yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what if the interviewer is not as pleasant as the two of you here are yeah. and you know the first hello that you hear on the phone or uh, in in front of the screen is not really as warm as they would be expecting what if they just begin straight with okay so you're here today and let's begin with this then how can the interviewee you know calm themselves down and kind of create that emotional impact there form a connection and be able to start with a calm uh, tone brian yeah. Yeah, you know, first of all, I always tell individuals when they go into a meeting, you know, chances are sometimes that, you know, people who are interviewing, they also need to be aware. And sometimes they're not, you know, they make they don't have eye contact, maybe they're writing things down, and, and that can be there. And I always try and tell the candidate that, you know, don't let that shake you and unground you for why you're there because be true to where, who you are. I think the most important moment is when you come in and if someone just, you know, I remember one interview that I had before I was like even seated, they started firing questions at me. Like, I mean, and this individual was as cold as an iceberg. Like it was just, it was really intense. What I did is I just kind of took a breath just very quietly, just to inhale and breathe. We forget to breathe. And that is one of the easiest ways to just quietly take a breath in, even hold for like two seconds and just breathe it out and smile when you do it, yeah. that will relax you. And what will that will do is it will free you to also start answering the question with ease rather than rushing in. So that's a very, very important aspect. The other aspect too, is that's where that preparation, I spoke about visualizing. So one of the things I do is, you know, I actually recorded a meditation called visualization meditation for interviews. And it's about visualizing the room or visualizing the Zoom and see yourself having a great conversation, being prepared, knowing, you know, what you want to speak about, have your stories ready. And when you do that in your mind, when you're in that moment, especially if something does happen that throws you off a question or a person, that you're more calm because you've been there before. So as athletes do the visualization, it's also important that you do that because if not, that's when the self-doubt can start to creep into your mind and the lack of confidence. So those are two big things. Visualization, breathing are great ways to keep grounded, especially when things get shaky. Yeah. And one last thing before we get into the actual interview process, which is uh, what, what happens when, you know, the first question gets fired at you. But uh, just before that, what do you say or what do you have to say about small talk? Is that something which is good to begin on your own? Um, like the weather, oh my God, it's, it's been acting out like this, or, you know, uh, where you are, what the situation is like, or to be able to ask the other person, especially during this phase of the pandemic, of course, um, no one knows exactly what the other person might be going through. Uh, and we're just meeting for maybe a few minutes for an interview call. So what's your advice there? Clark, I'd ask you this one, because from the HR perspective, what would you say? Is that something you would appreciate in a candidate if they were to ask you that? I think small talk is always a, a, a good way to break the ice. It's a, it's a great icebreaker. It's a great way to help try and calm your nerves and, and establish that, that early connection with, with the hiring manager or, or, or interview panel. 
Um, and if you're, and a great way to do that kind of homework and research is to, you know, okay, well, what do I talk about and how do I connect with these individuals? LinkedIn's a wonderful place. Everyone has these days a LinkedIn profile. So, but if you know who you're going to meet with, and who the hiring manager, who the panel is, look on the LinkedIn profile, get some background about them. And those can give you some insights into little things that you might want to bring up at the beginning and, and talk about, oh, I see you work here and that's really exciting. And you must have had a really interesting career that it's a really interesting role you're in. And you can, like you said, bring up things like the weather and, and, and as, as easy as that. It, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it just establishes dialogue early on and, uh, and, and helps relax you out. And, and the thing is here is, interviews are all different in terms of the in, the hiring manager or hiring panel it's all different so you can have people like brian and myself who've been doing this for a long time we're trained in uh, our ability to try and relax candidates try and get the best information out of them as possible so we can make an informed hiring decision that's our job but there's there's people like us and then there's everything in between for people who, who who have never interviewed before and they're showing up and they've got a million pressures and they're, you know, they're just thinking about what, what they got to do next. And, um, you know, they, they're not familiar with the interview process. So coming in and being ready to engage is, is very helpful for you to, again, calm your own nerves and establish that dialogue and connection. One thing I would just add on those excellent points about small talk, I'm all for it. I think it's great. Everything was said. I have seen a couple candidates because they're nervous and they're already quite chatty. They aren't taking the, the cue from the person who's there, who's ready to start to be the questions. And I saw in a couple instances that they went on too long with a story. Like it, it went from just chit chat to like this big, long story they start sharing. And so I think it's always important to be very mindful of, kind of the environment and how they're responding and let the other person also kind of take it too. Cause it's important, but it has a, you have to know when to stop too. Yes. Yeah. And that's definitely a tough one. It's, it's that fine balance that actually becomes the most difficult to kind of uh, navigate at that point. So I'm sure that, you know, our attendees today will have lots of questions for you. Um, this is also a good chance for anyone attending to maybe present tough situations that you were faced with in the interviews. And we've got two experts answering those for you. Or just tell us the challenging questions that you're looking for, uh, looking for the, those answers. Um, now over to both you, both of you here again. Um, to ask you a little bit more about the process now. So, you know, we've had that chit chat, we've begun with the first question. Now, slowly I can see that, okay, there are more questions about my experience or more questions about my previous experience. Sometimes that experience, you may be applying for an entry level role, your previous experience, especially in the case of newcomers to Canada, that often happens that skilled immigrants come with a lot more experience and apply to jobs that may be a few positions below what they've done earlier. How do you navigate that? Clark, how about you? Yeah, I, I think it's, it, you navigate that by, you know, explaining why you're applying for that specific organization, uh, you know, why you've targeted them specifically. Um, people throughout their careers are, are making upward movement, lateral movement, and downward movement, depending on, on you know, where, they, where they see themselves and where they want to go. So if, if you're applying for a specific organization and you say you have a lot of experience, but this is a lesser role, talk, talk about the organization. Talk about your excitement for joining, you know, being in the country, being new to Canada, joining that specific organization, why you're interested in that organization, where you see your career unfolding, as a result of joining that organization and you know your ability to translate all your experience that you have into into the role that that you've applied for and i think if you can speak to that um it, it really does sell yourself to uh, the hiring manager mm. yeah and i think the other point too is i mean that's a great great way to frame that um because if you try and say oh i know i have more experience it's it's not going to come across confidence and, you, mm -hmm. and you're underselling yourself. So it's a, it's a very positive way to do that. And that's a, and that's a great, great way to do that. Yeah. 
Now, Brian, if we were to focus on, say, some other aspects of communication when we're answering a question, uh, you know, the mindset, of course, we've talked about, but the speech, the thought clarity, um, the presentation, the structure of your answer. Uh, are there any tips there that you would want to share with uh, the attendees today? Sure. We spoke a little bit about it, but I'm going to re highlight it again because I think it's very important. You know, eye contact is so critical. Um, it really is. As you're speaking your answer, whether you're doing it on Zoom to make sure you're looking at the camera, um, that you're, you know, you're not looking somewhere else or if you're in the room. Um, also, it's important and appropriate when it's the right moment to smile as you speak or, you know, smile at the end that draws in those who are around the room. And, you know, it's very simple, you know, just have a smile as you're speaking. That communicates confidence, it communicates your expertise, and it draws the person in. I think it's also very important to know when to stop with your answers. That is where a lot of candidates, especially at the beginning, the first couple of questions where there's more nerves, sometimes go too long. So it's important, as Clark said, you know, practice, 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 practice those answers. And it's better to stop and then look at the panel and say, I'm happy to continue to elaborate if you have more questions on that or if you want to dig a little further. Give them a chance. And that's a great way. It helps you catch your breath and be calm. And it also navigates whether they want more information. Sure. Yeah, and just, just, to, just to touch on one more point there, and, and Brian covered every, everything there. And at the end is just that, that pause. So we're applicants and it, and it, you see it all the time is if I stop talking, then I think it's going to be awkward in, in the, in the interview room. And if I pause, they're all just going to be staring at me and I better fill this dead air space with more stuff to say. It's okay to pause. It's okay to pause at the end of your answer and say, would you like me to continue it? Is there anything else? Do you like me? Do you like me to cover or highlights that you haven't got out of my answer at, at this point, or even partway through your answer? If you need to take a moment just to pause and collect your thoughts when they first ask the question, again, pause, think about what you want to say, and then respond. Silence in an interview room is okay. That anyone who's interviewed before hiring managers, they're used to that. They're going to be thinking about you know what what's happening next in their day catching up with their note taking it's no it, there's no imposition on them so take the time to pause collect your thoughts and and practice uh, your, your 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 delivery by um just taking those few moments to, to to get your thoughts together it's really effective way helps calm your nerves too now, something I heard before, and I, uh, Brian, you were the one to say this, that, you know, sometimes the answers go on too long, but how does an interviewee figure out if it's gone too long? Of course, with practice, you know, they become more perfect at it, but is there like a time period that you would want to specify either a few, uh, a standard, uh, maybe a one minute answer to most questions at the beginning, or what is definitely a no-no that, you know, over say two minutes, three minutes is definitely not going to be acceptable. Yeah, I think, you know, it depends on the question. It depends on the level of um, the position that you're applying for. Sometimes there'll be a question that it does need to be elaborated for a while, depending on what it is. And that's OK. I think there's two things that I tell candidates to be aware of. One is intuitively that feeling inside me like I'm talking too much. <laughs> like, you know, we're like I talk too much. So if you start having that feeling, that's when you need to start to say, you know what, I'm going to pause here, you know, and just simply say, yeah, I'm going to pause here um, and I'm happy to continue to elaborate or whatever. That's important. If you start having that feeling, the second is pay attention to those who are listening to you. If you start seeing people flipping the page, looking ahead to the next question, if they look out the window, if they're not there, that's an indication possibly that mm, you need to, you need to land the plane. Like you need, you know, you've been circling, you need to land your answer. And, and that's really important. Very, very important. Yeah. Now let's also talk about, you know, um, of course, both of you have shared lots of tips as to what one should do. 
uh, what is it that one should not do or maybe not focus on because most of the things will not be in our control or some of the conversations that we have, some of the situations may not be in our control. So what is it that one should definitely not worry about in an interview? So yeah, I think with, with when you're in an interview, there's, there's a couple of things. So I, you need to own the delivery and that's part of your preparation of, of how you want to uh, present yourself in, in that interview. There will, I've seen all sorts of bad behavior from hiring managers to hiring panels. Um, you know, what Brian talked about there, yes, you want to pick up on, on visual, uh, on visual cues where they put their pen down or they're starting to flip through their notepad. But some of that, is either a sign or some of it's bad behavior, just you know, people tuning out because they're, they're not focused on, on what they should be doing either. So stick to, stick to you being aware of some of those cues, having practiced in, in advance for, for, for that, but uh, own your delivery and, and how you wanna communicate and, 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 and tell your stories in, in that interview room. Um, one of the things I would say, just in a, as a side, not, not to worry about, sometimes you're going to get asked a question and you may not have an answer to it right away. And it just kind of stumps you. We've all had it where we get asked a question. You think, oh my goodness, I don't have an example that I can draw on for this. That's something that, you know, simply like I've talked about before with that two-way conversation you want to have with the hiring managers do you mind if I, I take a little bit of time to think about that? Let me skip over this question for the moment. We'll come back to it later, and, uh, and I should have an answer. Rather than you sit there and, and stress over trying to come up with an answer, um, just ask the hiring manager. I, I don't think I've ever seen a hiring manager that says, no, you must answer this question right now. Uh, most people are quite reasonable. So it's those types of things, you know, as you're communicating throughout the interview that sometimes... I see applicants, they read too much into that and they, they, they kind of get themselves off, off topic a little bit. Um, it, it, you know, have that two-way conversation, ask for clarity, ask to skip over questions. Those things, in, at least in the way I've interviewed in my past, you don't lose marks, you don't lose credibility. It's part of the process. Mm -hmm. And actually they respect you. I think yes. more that they really respect, wow, they want to think about it and you owned it. I think it's a real plus, absolutely. Let's also take a few audience questions. There's something related to, you know, what to worry about or not. Um, there's a question I see, which is when a behavioral question or an informational question gets asked uh, and the interviewer may have, say, a best answer or something like that in mind. And what you say may not be, may not necessarily match that best answer. So what do you do? You know, you start worrying about, oh, my God, I don't know if this works. If it doesn't, what's your uh, advice there for, for for me when I interview so I, I'm looking I'm looking for you know someone that comes to the table with a, a set of skills probably not all the skills I'm looking for but some of the skills I'm looking for but my main the main thing I'm looking for is fit and team fit and whether I can work with this individual and and and, and have a relationship with this with this person so those are the things I'm looking for uh, so if there's a question that perhaps they don't have everything uh, in their answer that I'm looking for, I'm going to pick up on a number of things as an interviewer that they do have um, that, you know, I'm going to tuck those away. And, you know, when the person leaves, I'm going to review everything they've said. And, and you know, so it's, I, I think what I'm trying to say is the totality of their interview, not just one simple response or one answer to a question that, you know, you think, oh, well, I didn't answer that totally well, so, you know, I, I think I'm sunk in my interview and they're not going to like me. It's the total package of your interview. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, interviewers are also, it's like buying a house. You know, everyone that knows is something that's going to have to be compromised with the candidates. Not every candidate is going to have everything. So yes, they're looking for so many of the, the qualifications, et cetera. But I've often seen too, and I'm sure you have, Clark, that Sometimes hiring managers will hire someone. They may not have all the qualifications, but because of their personality, because the way they would connect with the team, they make that decision. So I think it's, that's also important to keep in mind as well when you're interviewing. Absolutely. And in this day and age with skill shortages being what they are and 
people looking to hire talent, they, they are they are looking for that. They're looking for the the, the person who can who they can develop in, in in a role. You see, and for all the the people on on this uh, this session here today, when you look at job postings or job descriptions, some of them can be so discouraging because companies put so much down that they say, oh, the, you need to have everything. And they're, they're really written terribly. I, it's, it's one of those things where if I, if I was really into writing job descriptions and marketing job descriptions, I'd probably do that as a, as a career and work with companies to make them do it way better than how they do it because they turn away talent all the time by putting this wall up of like, you need to have all this stuff or don't apply. It's, it doesn't work like that. And, and trust me. So when you're out there and you're looking at jobs, no one ever has all the qualifications or very rarely do they do. So if you feel that you've got a good, uh, uh, some of the qualifications and you can bring your talent to that organization, then put your resume in the worst that's going to happen. The absolute worst that's going to happen. You don't hear anything. So what move on and, and you, you target another organization but you're never going to know if you don't, if you don't apply. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Ryan, a question from you, uh, for you from a viewer watching us on YouTube. Uh, could you maybe be, share some specific points about what to include in that first question, which is tell me about yourself. Uh, what's the right mix like? Maybe a little bit about your professional experience, why you immigrated to Canada, or tell us what it is. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think we covered a lot of that earlier too. So just to kind of highlight, I think it's, you know, a sense of sharing a little bit of, you know, why you immigrated, you know, why you're interested in the company. You know, I think that's really important and why your background aligns, you know, for that opportunity. I think that's a very positive way to begin and, you know, definitely practice it, practice the answer again and again um, and make sure you're comfortable with it and make sure that it's not too long. I think that's a great way. Just have three or four things that you just know right in your mind how you want to say it and it will flow and it sets the tone. Now let's also talk about, you know, uh, someone, uh, I think it was both of you at different points that you mentioned that the interview is a two-way process, right? It's a two-way conversation. And, and of course, that's a brilliant chance and opportunity for the interviewee to ask questions about the company, about the culture fit, uh, so many more. So what are your tips there or what would be some of those essential questions that you would say an interviewee must, must ask uh, to the interviewer? Mm -hmm. Brian, um, say about two top questions that you would recommend. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to, I'm so glad that came out because I wanted to bring it up. We have to remember that it's, it's a two-way street that you might be in the hot seat getting most of the questions, but you also have to pay attention when you're interviewing to how you're feeling, how, what kind of questions are they asking and, and to really pay attention to that. Wow. This is a place. Yeah. I, I might like to work here. I would like to go forward. I think it's important at what stage of the interview process you are at when that question comes up. Do you have any questions for us? If it's a first interview, I would say have one question and, you know, possibly two. And I would say, you know, I, at that stage, I would keep it a little more open, maybe about the role, maybe asking questions about the team, you know, what's been a great challenge, you know, or opportunity keep it that level, but don't, I saw one candidate one time open up their notebook and had like seven questions and like, it just right away just showed they didn't have an EQ of like, that's not the moment to do that. <laughs> As you move forward in the process, you can ask more technical questions. Um, but again, you have to be aware of the time and if it's the right place um, to ask that. And Clark, to you, uh, a question I see from Kareem is, what are some ways to get an understanding of what the culture is like or who you will be working with in the company? Um, that's something that, you know, most interviewees would want to know. But from an HR's perspective, what is it? How can we ask that? I, I think it's a very, very good question. And it's exactly that. I mean, you can, you can use your one or two questions in, at the end of the interview to ask a question like that. That'd be a great way to gain some insight. So in this role, if I were successful, who would I be, who would I be working for? Maybe you can describe a little bit about the culture of working within that department or, or area of the company. 
it's, it's a great way to gain some insight from the hiring manager uh, right, right then and there. Now at this point, I'd like to maybe present a few questions to you and uh, tell me, you know, a very brief answer there or just say one or two points that one must include in that question. So a difficult one would be, uh, tell us about your strengths and weaknesses. Which one should you go for first, strengths first or weaknesses first? And what do you really say in weaknesses? Because a response that I guess is often heard is, I, you know, the weakness is that I work too hard and I can't delegate. So how do you navigate that? Sure, I'll, I'll jump in with that one. So the strength one, uh, for, for me, that's where I look at, um, you know, when, when you're thinking about the skills and, and things that you bring to the table, you're taking maybe two of those from each of those sections that we talked about earlier on. That's where you talk about your strengths. Uh, some of the, and when, when you want to think of strengths, you want to think of the things that you feel you have that set you apart set you apart from your, your, your competition a little bit that you're really proud of and that you'd like to highlight and talk about those, talk about those strengths. In terms of order, usually you get asked, asked the question in the interview, tell us your strengths, and then they'll counter that with tell us about your weaknesses. Um, I don't really like either of the questions. I don't typically ask them in interviews, but I know they do get asked. If you do get asked a weakness question, the, the advice I give on that is, we're, we're all we're all human here, so we all have some strengths and we all have some weaknesses. So be prepared to talk about uh, a weakness that you may have, but then what you do to mitigate that weakness. So for for me, I can use myself as an example. Attention to detail is something that I struggle with a little bit when it comes to reviewing reports or analytical type information. So. I know that I have to be in a, in a quiet space where I'm focused and free from distraction so I don't make little mistakes. So that would be a weakness. But what I've just explained to the interviewer is that I'm aware of my weakness. I'm human. So I, 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 again, I'm, a, I'm aware of that, but I take steps to mitigate the impact of that weakness. And I'm, never, I'm not saying that I'm, I've taken that weakness and made it into a strength. I'm just saying that I, I'm aware of the weakness and I take steps to make sure that I keep myself in check um, and to, to, so I'm not making critical mistakes with, with that specific weakness of mine. So it's, I, I hear what you're saying. A lot of people will say, oh, I'm, I, I give 150%. So sometimes I, you know, I, I, I work too hard and you're kind of masking a strength as a weakness there. Yeah. Brian, um, the question about, you know, conflict with a superior, how you handle that, or, you know, if you get into an argument with say a colleague, those are difficult ones too, because no one wants to maybe, you know, show that you are someone who is authoritative, but at the same time, you want to show that you stand your ground and you are someone who is able to communicate well. Mm -hmm. So that's again, a fine balance, your tips there. Yeah, I would always say, take the positive high road. It's never the opportunity to start sharing in details of the dirty laundry or things like that. Always be positive. Say, you know, yeah, you know, I think all of us, again, it's a great way to bring everyone in to remember that every single person there is human to say, I'm sure all of us in our professional life have had a challenge with a colleague or with a superior, you know, or someone we worked with who we reported to. And I know from myself, I would always frame it in the positive saying it was a great opportunity for my growth that I learned how to, you know, communicate in a different style. Um, you know, let's say my boss had a different style of communication. It was quite challenging for me. And I took a different, you know, approach in that, or I learned how to collaborate with a colleague that was challenging uh, on a project and we still had the results and, but we had to work through that difference. So always frame it in the positive um, because that will always benefit you in the answer. Yeah. And one tricky one, uh, this would be the last one here is finances or, you know, uh, the money question that comes in, the remuneration, how much do you expect? Uh, I've heard advice that says that, you know, try and kind of delay this question to the last stage, but there are some who ask that upfront and would want an answer from you. So how do you balance that? Uh, Clark, maybe you could take this one. 
Yeah, so it, I, I agree with you, Shruti. It's, it's one of those questions where that they get asked and you really want to be in a position when you're answering that question that you're kind of further along in the process. They're, they're really interested in you, in you at that point and you can start the negotiation process. But some hiring managers and interviewers, they want to know uh, what your salary expectations are right, right, at, right at the front. So what I say to, to people on, on that and the advice I give is make sure you do your homework um, right up front. So with the role you're applying for and the industry you're applying for, uh, have, a, have a sense as to what similar jobs in that industry, uh, sal- what, what, what salary salaries go for. Um, great uh, website, salary.com, glassdoor.com. There's a couple of uh, websites like that that are really simple to sign up for. You type in industry, location, uh, position. It gives you a range. And, you know, then you can respond to the hiring, hiring manager and say, look, uh, you know, based on my research as to what, what uh, is out there in similar industries within this location, I feel my salary should be this or what I'm looking for is, is this. But it's based on research, uh, not based on just kind of, you know, a, a number that's made up in, in, in your mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the only other aspect I would add on that too is always be honest. Yes. You know, always, always be honest. If you're asked a direct question of like, you know, what is your current salary? You know, what are you seeking? Because, you know, some people think, well, how are they ever going to find out? Well, people can find out. Yes. And so always, always be honest. Thank you so much for those tips. I hope that, you know, the audience also is happy because we've been able to answer most of their questions and taking cues from what the two of you have taught us here today. I would like to give one last opportunity to both of you to maybe, you know, explain anything that I didn't ask you or it's something that you'd like to say at the end. So I'll begin with Clark and Brian, then to you. Sure. I, I think the only thing I would end on is, is really show up to an interview with enthusiasm, show up with uh, wanting to, uh, wanting to work for that organization, wanting to be in, in that specific role and be enthusiastic about that and let that shine through in the interview. And, and again, we've talked about this all over, you know, that comes down to practice, but it, it will resonate with the interviewer and, and or the hiring manager that you're passionate about the position, you're passionate about the organization it, it's, it's part of how you prepare, but that is what makes that connection. It's that enthusiasm, excitement for the job and, and, and being able to communicate that throughout the interview. I think it really helps set people apart from, from their competition. So that would be a, a piece of advice that I think would, you know, to take away, off, to take away with. Thank you. I, I think for myself, um, I would certainly say, if you are not successful in moving forward in an interview process, You always have a right to ask for feedback and to make sure that you ask for it because that's how we uh, learn. That's how we grow. And all you have to do is to listen. And then it's up to you to evaluate that further, but always, always ask for it um, because that's really a really big indicator. And the last thing I would say is, you know, Clark, I, I just have to say like you have amazing videos for anyone who's watching. I learned so much from Clark's amazing videos on YouTube and LinkedIn. So anyone who's watching, go out there and make sure to watch them because they're absolutely excellent. Thank you, Brian. Well, thank you to both of you. It's been a great session with you. A wonderful opportunity for all of our attendees to learn so much. And uh, of course, I would encourage everyone joining us today to continue watching us every week because we have more such sessions lined up for you. Uh, Once again, a very big thank you to Clark and Brian. This was a session on interview questions. On your screens, you can see uh, exactly how you can learn more about what Brian and Clark are up to. And of course, as Brian mentioned, more interview tips and lots of other resources on Clark's website too. With that, we've come to the end of this session. Uh, To stay updated about more such sessions that we have as part of Cafe New Canadians, please do follow us on social media. And of course, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter of New Canadians. You can also watch our content on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to just hit the notification bell right there uh, so that you get notified each time that we have a new video coming up. It would be interesting if you can also tag us in your journey 
on social media, connect with us. And of course, let us know any questions that you have or give us suggestions on what topic you'd like to see us discuss next. Thank you so much. Before you exit, you'll see your survey pop up on your screen. Uh, do give us some feedback. That'll just help us uh, coordinate and come up with more and better sessions for you. Thank you to everyone joining, the attendees, the guests. It has been wonderful. Stay safe and we'll see you again next week.